Hello and welcome to this lecture on multi-criterion optimization where we'll be exploiting more topics closely. We'll first start off with a reminder on what multi-criterion optimization is and in particular what the Pareto optimal frontier is. Then we'll talk about the optimal trade-off analysis that we didn't tap on in the previous lecture. As a reminder, multi-criterion optimization is a particular instance of vector optimization. So vector optimization aims at minimizing a multi-cost, so a functional vector subject to inequality and equality constraints. Now, multi-criterion optimization is a particular case when we pick the proper cone K to be R plus. So basically we're just, you know, choosing x to minimize all costs simultaneously. A point is said to be optimal in a multi-criterion optimization problem when we cannot find another point that achieves a lower cost than x star, the optimal point. So all costs are minimized at the optimal point, right? Also, a multi-criterion problem is said to be convex when all the functions involved are convex, that is, all my uppercase f's and lowercase f's and the h's are convex. We can also interpret uppercase f1 down to uppercase fq as scores. So we're trying to jointly optimize the scores. We also gave another interpretation of optimal points, x star. We said that, you know, so if we find a cost where x star beats y, then x, we say that x star dominates y. We gave another interpretation of an optimal point, that is, x star should simultaneously be optimal for the separate scalar optimization problems. That is, if we form q optimization problems, each containing the scalar cost, the jth entry of x, 0 of x, as such, right? If x star is optimal for the q problems, for all q problems, then x star is optimal for the multi-criterion problem. If such an x star exists, we say that you know the objectives are non-competing. So there is no feasible point that does better than x star in some problems and vice versa. So all costs agree that x star should be optimal. In this case, you say that you have a non-competing problem or your objectives are non-competing. And we also gave a nice interpretation for vector optimization problems in general. We say that a point is optimal when f0 of x star is the minimum element of the set O, that is the set of achievable objective values. However, if it is the minimal element, then we say that x star is Pareto optimal. To get a better feel of multi-criterion optimization, assume that we don't have an optimal point. Assume that we, we have Pareto optimal points. That is, in other words, we've got two points that are, you know, or more. We've got two or more points that are optimal in some sense. We'll state how. Um, but let's say for the moment we have two, x and y. Let's say that they're Pareto optimal, okay? Now, what does Pareto optimal mean when we've got a multi-criterion optimization problem? So imagine the following case. Imagine the following. Imagine that x beats y in some fi's where i belongs to a set A, okay? And vice versa, imagine that y beats x in some other scores, of course, a and C are non-overlapping. They don't have common indices or elements. And imagine the, the equilibrium case where X and Y tie or are at as good as each other. So over here, X beats Y in A. Over here, Y beats X in C. And right here, X ties y and b. Okay? Naturally, the unions of a, b, and c form the set 1, 2, down to q. So I'll just give you a small example to see what's going on. So imagine that 
f1. First of all, imagine that q is 5, so I've got 5 cos, and f1 of x, so I've got 5 cos that I will evaluate at x. Let's say for no reason they evaluate at 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7. Okay? Whereas f1, y, f2, y, f3, y, 4, and 5 evaluate at 7, 6, 3, 5, and 2. Okay? So it's also given that x and y and Pareto optimal. What are the sets A, B, and C? Well, we can see that A, since 1 is less than 7, 2 is less than 6, 4 is less than 3, and no more than the indices where x beats y are 1, 2, and 3. The set B where x ties with y is 4, because here we've got a 5, here we've got a 5, so B is 4, and C contains only 5, where y beats x. So that's just a small example. Now, in the extreme case where a is c is phi, that is b is the only non-empty set, we say that x and y have the same objective value. That said, those two vectors are equal entry-wise at x and y. So that's one thing to notice. And another very important thing is that it cannot happen that A is empty and C is not empty, also vice versa. That means it cannot happen that A is not empty and C is empty. If one is empty, then the other has to be empty. A Pareto optimal point cannot beat another Pareto optimal point in all costs and tie it in others. No, then the other point is not Pareto optimal anymore. You know? In other words, when we compare two Pareto optimal points, they either obtain the same performance, that is in all objectives, they are equal, that is A and C are empty, or each beats the other in at least one objective. So A and C are both non-empty or empty together, okay? So when we compare X with Y, we say that we have traded off better objective values for those in costs in A or for those indices corresponding to the costs in set A for worse objective values for other costs in the set C. That is, we chose X in a way that it beats Y in some costs by sacrificing or trading off or compromising for other costs that fall that correspond to indices in the set C, okay? So there is, there is a kind of trade-off analysis here or trade-off choices to make. You can't expect to beat another Pareto optimal point in, in all the objective values. So the question here is how bad are you willing to sacrifice or to trade off X for Y or vice versa? In other words, the better you do in some objective values, you're going to do worse in other objective values. It's, it's a kind of game here. So the question here is, what is the best choice, right? What do we do? There's a trade-off. How bad are we willing to, to take in C, right? Or can we increase the ties in B, right? Can we increase, can we have ties, more ties? Could, are you willing to take that? That's one question. That's one thing to look at. The thing we will be looking at more closely is the optimal trade-off analysis. So optimal trade-off analysis will be to see how much worse we must do in one or more objectives, let's say C and C, in order to do better in some other objectives, that is an A. So as an example, imagine my Q is 2, Q is 2, so I've got a bicriterion problem since I have two costs I'm looking at, that is f1 of x and f2 of x, and suppose that my x is better to optimal. So imagine that I have a feasible point y such that f1 of y is less than or equal to f1 of x 
minus a, where a is positive, strictly positive, and f2 of y is greater than or equal to f1 of x. That is, x beats y in 2, in objective 2, whereas y beats x in objective 1. The question here is this. How much are we willing to lose in the second objective in order to achieve an improvement in the first objective? So how should we pick A, which reflects the improvement? So the larger A is, the more F1 of Y is, you know, getting smaller and smaller compared to F1 of X, right? So in other words, the larger A is, the better we do in objective 1. Now. Is it that we're going to lose a lot in objective two? That's the optimal trade-off analysis. So if a large increase in F2, Y, and this guy, this 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 bound, you know, is loosened, F2 of Y increases rapidly, whereas A increases slightly, in other words, this bound is not affected that much, we say that there's a strong trade-off between the objectives near X. With a small sacrifice in the, in the second objective, you know? In that case, we say that the trade-off is weak near x. If you recall from the previous lecture, the following boundary or frontier of Pareto optimal points, this is also referred to as the optimal trade-off curve when we've got a bicriterion problem. Now, when we've got more than two costs, then this is referred to as, this is no longer a curve as you see here it's it's a surface so trade-off analysis in fact exploits the optimal trade-off surface this surface tells us where the Pareto optimal points are in the extreme case all those points will boil down in a single point if this is the case if this red curve is just a point then this point is not Pareto optimal anymore it's, it's the optimal point it's the best point. It beats any other value. If my O looks something like, you know, this, for example, and this is my O right here, right? Then this red point is no longer Pareto optimus. It's the optimal point because it beats all other points that achieve the values O. It has the minimum cost for both functions, F1 and F2. So that's it for optimal trade-off analysis for vector optimization. In case you found this lecture beneficial, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video. In case you have any questions, you can just leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I'll see you in the next one.